All right, so this is how to write your summative essay for a mice and men. Um, and this just goes over what you should expect for interest and uh, conclusion and what we should see in your body paragraphs. Okay, remember that you're picking one of the uh, lines of inquiry and you have to examine the book through either the fem Marxist, feminist, or social justice lens. So either power, social class, feminist, gender, or social justice, being that it is I'm looking at race specifically, okay? And so you're reading a five paragraph essay. You have to have a thesis statement and topic sentences for each one of your paragraphs. You have, like I said, an intro, three body paragraphs, and a concluding paragraph. All your paragraphs should be five to seven sentences each. And then there's lots of different details from the book that need to be incorporated, including three quotes within your paragraphs, okay? These are the, ch this is a checklist of things. You'll see this on the peer review sheet. All these things you should be able to check off. Yep, I did all these things, okay? So your essay will include an introduction, which has a hook, background info, and a thesis. That should make up your five to seven sentences. Each one of your body paragraphs should have a point, some evidence, and an explanation. Again, five to seven sentences, and then your conclusion is a summary, main points, and concluding paragraph, or concluding statement. I'll go over each of these throughout this video. Okay, so your intro, again, hook, background info, thesis statement. Okay, so you want to get hook your reader into reading your essay. And if this is hard to do, go do your body paragraphs first and come back and do your introduction later. That's totally fine. But you should be able to hook your reader into wanting to read your essay. So sometimes you might use a quote um, to help give interest into your essay or some sort of intriguing statement or a shocking factor statistic. These are all different ways to hook your reader into wanting to read your essay. So choose one of these things to use to get your reader into this essay. You're reading, you're talking about a mice and men. Maybe you've got a quote from one of the characters. Maybe you have a fact or statistic about the 1930s or some other thought that you had about the book that you wanted to start your essay off with. Okay, here's an example if you use a quote. Okay, here's an example, oh, oh, sorry. And if you use the quote, okay, you need to tell me who said it and who they are, okay? Um, if you use an intriguing statement, that's totally fine, okay? Or a shocking factor statistic, maybe you wanna talk about the Great Depression and what was happening, I don't know, okay? Pick something and make that work for your essay, okay? Don't get hung up on the hook. Okay, then you have to tell me, of course, that you're, you're talking about a mice and men in your book. John Steinbeck is the author, and you have to incorporate the line of inquiry that you've chosen from the document. Okay, so give us some context. We need to know what's going on. Why are you writing what you are? Okay, so here's an example of what this should look like in your graphic organizer. Okay, I have a hook. I've got some background information. I've got the title here. I've got the author right down here in the thesis statement, so that's fine. And then I've got the information that talks about the um, line of inquiry that I've chosen. And so my thesis then, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, communicates the message that dreams are central to human power in the character of Curly's Wife through the Marxist literary lens, okay? And so that I, you know that I'm gonna use this lens. I'm talking about Curly's Wife as a, the character that I'm examining and I'm getting through to the message of the dreams, okay? And that helps with the line of inquiry that I'm answering, okay? So, and there, there's the line of inquiry right here, okay? Um, if I choose to do it with a different hook, okay? Here I have it with my um, thought, okay? Notice though, sorry. My background information got a little bit different and I changed my thesis slightly because I was writing my hook slightly different, okay? Your thesis is the most important part of your intro though. So again, don't get hung up on your hook, okay? Your thesis has to state your argument. What are you trying to tell us? What's your point, okay? It should answer your prompt and it should be clear, short, argue is your point, okay? And should be about one, maybe two sentences max, 
You will not say the word I in your thesis. Do not do it. I should not see the word I or you at all in your pair, in your essay, but do not include I think this. No, you're not an expert, so do not use the word I. Okay, and include, make sure you're including uh, what you need to and not being too, getting into the details because that's you're going to save for your body paragraphs. Okay, so remember, you're picking one of these lines of inquiry. Here's the ones for the nature of dreams. Here's the one for loneliness, powerlessness, or fate. Pick whichever one you want to answer, okay? And if it hasn't specifically addressed one of the lenses, Marxist, feminist, or uh, social justice, then you add it, okay? How would you think about Candy's dog as an example when you're no longer used? All right, is that something that would deal with power? Is it something that deals with gender? Or is it something that deals with the idea of race, okay? And how would you examine it through that lens, okay? Uh, again, your intro paragraph should be tapped when you write it into your essay. Okay, you've got your hook, background information, and thesis. There's an example right here, and you have an example posted in the um, assignment sheet, okay? Then this is the meat, this is the heart. If you are stuck on your intro, go to your body paragraphs first, okay? You should be following the P structure, point, evidence, and explanation, okay? And your first body paragraph should address your line of inquiry question right away and talk about what happened at the beginning of the book and how you would answer it. The second body paragraph, okay, is thinking about the literary lens, okay, Marxist, feminist, or social justice. And how does that apply to the character or characters that you're looking at, that you discussed, and how does that apply to what we were seeing in the book? And the last thing should just think about the ending and how your answer may have been similar throughout the whole uh, book, or maybe things were changing throughout the book. And th by the end of the book, things were looked different, and so you would answer your question slightly different. So that's what you're going to do for your three body paragraphs. Okay, again, all your body paragraphs should have a point. The main idea, that's your topic. What is this paragraph going to be about? You have to incorporate evidence, so a quote for, from the book for each one of your paragraphs. Don't forget the page number. And then you should have one to two sentences explaining eat why your evidence proves your point for your paragraph. Okay, here's an example one, okay, using the template, okay, um, and about why maybe Curly's wife was never given a name. So here's some evidence that we're about showing that she, she, we never found her name, okay, and then how that impacts her. Okay, topic sentence, evidence, and that should only be one sentence, if not two, and then explanation. That's, again, one, two, maybe three sentences, okay? So you hit five to seven sentences for each one of your body paragraphs, okay? And don't forget to tab each one of your body paragraphs, okay? When you're using quotes, make sure they're short. If they're part of your sentence so that it doesn't stick out, okay? Uh, make sure it makes sense that you're not just dropping them in, okay? Make sure you're using quotation marks, and of course you want to include the page number and parentheses at the end, okay? So notice how I'm just using these little bits from page 78 in this sentence. It doesn't have to be a whole long quotation. It can be short, okay, to get my point across, okay? And this is actually stronger writing if you're doing it this way rather than giving me a whole 10 sentence or 10 word quote, okay? Um, here's a second body paragraph examining the character a little bit more, okay? And I'm talking about the literary lens in this body paragraph. So this one is looking at the feminist lens to answer the question, okay? Again, topic sentence, evidence, couple sentences, and an explanation to show why that evidence helps answer my topic sentence, okay? And then the last one is answering the line of inquiry, thinking about the ending of the book and how your answer may have changed and what happened at the end of the book and is that, is that still impacting the characters at the end, okay? This one, slightly shorter, it's probably just five sentences versus seven, okay? So don't forget to tab, topic exams, evidence, explanation. I'm saying this over and over and over again, but I wanna make sure you understand that this is how your paragraph should flow, okay? And then your conclusion should have your thesis statement restated, your summary of your main points, and a concluding statement. Okay, so 
your conclusion should start again with that thesis statement. It should not be word for word the same as what you said before, but tweak it a little bit um, so that we don't remember what your whole essay was about. You can bring out some really interesting points that you brought up in your essay, okay? And leave us with some really great thought. Do not say, that's my essay, or that's all I have to say, or the end, okay? Again, I don't want to see I, my, we, okay? None of those pronouns should be in there, okay? I do not want to see you say it, and that's all I have to say, or in conclusion. That's also my least favorite way to say, to end your essay, okay? Strong writers will not need to say in conclusion. They can make us uh, understand their essay without needing to use those words, okay? So with my beginning, okay, this was my thesis statement original, originally over here. So instead, of, I'm going to say using a feminist lens of mice and men, it shows that women, like Curly's wife, are valued only for their appearance, not their dreams. Hmm. Looking right here, dreams, communicating the message. I'm explaining the message a little bit, okay? And again, I don't need to mention the, or, and I've mentioned the literary lens one more time here using this lens. This is how I examined it, okay? Then summarize some of the really good points. You don't need quotes. You don't need evidence. Just what did we figure out in the book? And then conclude it, okay? Um, and this is the hard part as well, okay? You can give your opinion, but do not use the word me or my thoughts or I, okay? What do you think people understood out of this book? What should they get from this essay? Make a prediction. That's actually a much stronger. In if this book were to continue, it might have had what, okay? Um, or again, repeat one of your really strong bits. Think back to your hook. Maybe you want to bring that back into your last sentence of your conclusion, okay? So this is what your concluding paragraph might look like. Again, your thesis statement is restated here at the top. You summarize a little bit of what you said, okay? Don't need quotes, and then have some really strong point, like this one. Sadly for Curly's wife, her dream and her life were cut short. And that's, not, that's enough, okay? And say anything about my thoughts. I didn't use the word I, okay? Make sure, again, you're tabbing your paragraphs, and this is what your concluding paragraph should look like, okay? That was a lot of information. You can always come back to this. You just watch the parts that you need to watch, okay? And that's that.